I'm Marty Stauffer. As a child, some of my favorite storybook characters were rabbits. Peter Cottontail, Uncle Wiggily, and most of all, Br'er Rabbit. After all, who can resist an animal with soft fur, bright eyes, and cute little ears? The Cottontail is perhaps the most prominent character in American folklore. But bedtime stories hardly reflect the daily struggle for survival of real-life rabbits. In addition to a host of wild predators, rabbits must also face human hunters. Yet despite so many dangers, there's rarely a short supply of cottontails and kin. One of the most familiar mammals in the world is the rabbit. It's found on every continent except Antarctica and in nearly every habitat. No matter where the rabbit lives, one thing is certain, danger is sure to follow. Every animal with a taste for meat yearns to feast on these cuddly looking creatures. The most frequent aerial attacks come from the great horned owl. Of the mammals, the fox is number one on a long list of rabbit hunters. About the only thing a rabbit need not fear is getting old. Their average lifespan is a brief nine months. white tail, flared in alarm, is called a flash pattern. It's not only a sign to other rabbits to beware of danger, it's also a method to confuse pursuers. The attacker just naturally hones in on the bunny's brilliant white tail light. Then when the rabbit stops and freezes, the pattern vanishes, leaving the predator searching in vain for the non-existent powder puff of white. Although most of us think of the cottontail as lightning fast, it can rarely sprint over 20 miles per hour. Its average running speed is only about 12 to 15 miles per hour. It relies on quick reflexes, a zigzag running pattern, and an uncanny knowledge of the few acres in its home range. For the cottontail, 
Life is one long dash for survival. Before winter gives way to spring, the cottontail begins an amazing cycle. Few species could lose 80% of their population every year and continue to exist. But nature has armed the cottontail with a special weapon. By the end of February, the female cottontail or doe will bring a litter of young into the world the first of as many as seven litters she will bear in one year. One cottontail pair plus offspring, if they all survive to reproduce, would number 300,000 in only five years. The average litter of four to six bunnies is born blind, helpless, and nearly hairless. Even though blind, at less than one week old, they begin bunny hopping around the nest. Their birthplace may seem like a safe haven, but they're vulnerable, and less than half will survive to greet the outside world. Even a shrew, a tiny predator smaller than a mouse, will kill baby bunnies. The doe will visit the nest site only several times a day to avoid calling attention to its location. She usually waits until twilight before entering to nurse. The nest, complete with cover, is made of grass and leaves and lined with soft fur, which the doe plucks from her belly. Tiny white blaze on their foreheads, so apparent now, will usually disappear in adulthood. two short weeks, the young rabbits are on their own. They're more or less ready to explore a world full of strange and intriguing sights and mysterious creatures. The young sample a diet which will eventually consist of almost everything that grows, including poison oak and poison ivy. Cottontail babies aren't the only youngsters abroad on this warm early spring day. My daughter Hannah and son Luke are enjoying an outing too and are intrigued by anything that moves. Last spring. Mm -hmm. yep. And there aren't any dragonflies yet. Watch it. Watch it with your stick. Watch it with your stick. Watch it with your stick. Don't poke people. Hey, Dad, look at the baby bunny. Be careful, Hannah spies this cute cottontail, one of the first newborns of the year. Incredibly soft, there are few animals as delightful for children to touch as a bunny. Careful, be very careful with it. Let's see, she went to Luke. Luke, look at the bunny. Mm. <laughs> baby. That's just a little baby. Apple. 
Oh, don't be afraid. Oh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Oh, and those little feet. Those little feet are so great. The little claws. You need to learn how to hide better. So nobody gets you. Good luck. Time for this wild baby to go home. In the first few weeks after leaving the nest, the litter mates hang around, using the nest site as a base of operations. Each day, they venture farther from home until they're finally independent. Cottontails are normally solitary, spending most of their time alone foraging for food. In recent years, cottontail numbers have been declining, not because they can't find enough to eat, but because their habitat has been shrinking. There are fewer safe places to nest and hide from their enemies. Brush piles provide excellent cover for cottontails, and it's cover that's easy to create. Instead of disposing of treetops after logging, the remains can be piled up near the edge of a woodlot fence row or open meadow. Eventually, these brush piles will grow over and serve as a refuge for rabbits. Especially in winter, cottontails need adequate cover to elude their pursuers. Unlike the snowshoe hare, the cottontail sports the same basic wardrobe year-round. On a background of white, its brown coat puts it at a distinct disadvantage. A place to hide is critical and well worth fighting over. The soft-eyed cottontails suddenly become backstreet brawlers, boxing with short front legs bobbing and weaving, bounding up in the air, and thumping each other with their long, powerful back legs. The contest is soon over and the king of the brush pile feels free to browse nearby on bark and twigs. The cottontails and their kin live from coast to coast. Each is adapted to a particular environment. The smallest of the family is the pygmy rabbit. It lives in the sagebrush of the Great Basin. The common cottontail of lower elevations in the arid southwest is the long-eared desert cottontail. The smaller, darker brush rabbit lives in California and Oregon coastal regions to the west of the Cascade and Sierra mountain ranges. The familiar eastern cottontail is the most widespread family member, found all the way from the Atlantic coast to Arizona. The water-loving marsh rabbit, a dark brown bunny that swims as well as it hops, 
lives in the southeastern part of the United States. By far the largest member of the family is the swamp rabbit of our southern wetlands. Not only an expert swimmer, but a superb diver as well. It's known as a swamper to the locals and is highly prized as a game animal. Hunters spend more time and money trying to bag rabbits than all other types of game combined. And the swamper poses some special challenges for even experienced hunters. The hefty six pound swamp rabbit will take to the water like an otter to throw these beagles off the track. While the dogs stay dry, the swamper seems as at home in water as on land. Habitat destruction and the draining of wetlands threaten the swamp rabbit. Its numbers continue to dwindle. In the end, this dark-haired trickster proves too clever for even the keenest of canine noses. Get in here. Hop, hop, all right. Hop, yeah. Where the ranges of swamp rabbit and eastern cottontail overlap, the two species are hard to tell apart, even though the swamper is normally larger, darker, and in this instance, wetter. Only by preserving cypress swamps and bottomland hardwoods can we ensure a home for one of the slyest of the cottontail clan, the swamp rabbit. The shallow water and shimmering sawgrass of the Everglades attracts a host of rare and unusual animals. At a glance, you might mistake this strong swimmer for a muskrat, but it's really a marsh rabbit, a cottontail cousin that actually prefers water. This semi-aquatic member of the rabbit family is abundant within its range in South Georgia, Southeast Alabama, and nearly all of Florida. It may feed, rest, and nest on a tussock mound surrounded by water. By contrast, the eastern cottontail, with a range which overlaps that of the marsh rabbit, hates to get wet and takes to the water only in a dire emergency. In this case, a hungry young alligator forces the cottontail to swim or face the consequence.
Once committed, there's no turning back. Only with some fast acceleration and a little luck does the cottontail escape the jaws of an adult gator. The habitat of the desert cottontail is every bit as dry as the marsh rabbits is wet. The sizzling hot southwestern deserts are more commonly thought of as jackrabbit country. Jackrabbits are actually hares. Their oversized black-tipped ears are responsible for their name, a shortened version of jackass rabbit. By comparison, the pale gray desert cottontail is much smaller. Its black trimmed ears, while not as large as the jackrabbits, are larger than the eastern cottontail. This adaptation helps both jackrabbit and desert cottontail air condition their bodies. The cottontail of the desert has much shorter legs and feet than the jackrabbit and it sports the fluffy white tail of its kind. The desert cottontail, like all of its kin, regularly returns to its form, a shallow depression which it digs in the dirt and rests in during much of the day. The southwestern desert is also home to the world's only venomous lizard, the Gila monster. These two foot long lizards feed on baby rabbits and rarely on a careless adult. Cottontail, unaware that it's being stalked, rests in its form. The slow-moving Gila monster stands little chance of catching an alert adult. Not only is the cottontail of the desert quick, it can even climb trees. Desert cottontails have adapted to these low-lying valleys of little rain by feeding on cactus and weeds that are high in moisture. The plateau country of northeastern Utah is a land of sagebrush. Here, the range of the pygmy rabbit and mountain cottontail overlap. The pygmy rabbit lacks the fluffy white tail of the mountain cottontail, and its short legs hamper its ability to jump as strongly as other rabbits. The pygmy relies on sage as its major source of food, a characteristic which causes it to have a strong, distinctive odor. When mountain cottontail and pygmy rabbit meet, their size difference is easy to see. Even so, the pygmy is reluctant to back down. And when push comes to shove, the feisty pygmy puts its larger cousin in its place with a well-timed jump and kick. Both cottontail and pygmy use many of the same well-worn travel routes, like this one in a dry riverbed.
Many North American rabbits hole up in the burrows of ground dwellers only to avoid danger or extreme cold. The pygmy, on the other hand, not only lives underground, it excavates the burrow itself, living in a colony with others of its kind. Fierce predators like the mink regularly hunt these ravines and burrows. First, it checks at the pygmy rabbit's front door, but decides to pass by. It opts instead to come in the back door. Pygmy rabbit barely escapes out the front entrance. Not only mink, but owls, coyotes, and hawks prey upon the tiny pygmy of these sagebrush plateaus. Much more than storybook characters, rabbits play a real-life role in the balance of nature. Furry charmers that add special beauty to nature's stage. Rabbits depend on wariness, speed, and above all, fertility to ensure the future of their kind. Yet as well prepared for survival as they are, the one threat they can't overcome is the loss of habitat. But we can create more food and cover for them by leaving brush piles and hedgerows unburned and by planting berry thickets. With a little help from us, rabbits will remain a vital link in nature's food chain and a source of enjoyment to all those who delight in cottontails and kin. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.